Welcome to the Empowering Humanity Show with Amy Kardashian, where you can find inspiration, education, healing, peace, and hope. Today's guest, George Chanos, former Attorney General of Nevada, international keynote speaker, chairman of the board of Capriati's for over 10 years, and the author of Millennial Samurai. And now, let's welcome Amy and her guest. In this segment, we are going to talk about how to adapt to a new world. And we all know how fast we're going with technology. And uh, I have a guest today that is going to literally blow your mind. I mean, I am so excited to have him. I had him before, but you know, I, I can't have him enough because he has so much information, so much insights to really help us see our life 20 years from now, 30 years from now, what's going to happen, and pre uh, prepare us for that. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I it's always great to see you. Thank you. I, I can't have enough of you being on the show because you always have something new. I saw you speaking um, like a couple months ago. Yeah. at uh, You were the keynote speaker. And I'm like, oh. There is something new, always. He brings something new to the table. Yeah. I need to have you again. So I appreciate you giving us your time. Well, thank you. Yeah, and being here. Well, tell us how, what's going on? What's new? Yeah, so, so the world, I mean, if you look out, um, when you're driving around, you, uh, things seem kind of relatively the same. Like, you know, there's not much change from how things were a year ago or five years ago when you're just basically driving around. But when you turn on the television set and you watch the news, you see that the world is really changing. It's, it's very much different than it was, uh, for example, when I was growing up or when we were growing up. And um, so what's happening? You know, what's, what's causing this? And, uh, and where is this going? And, um, and how should we be thinking about this? And, and how do we understand all of this? <clears throat> and so, um, I've been spending quite a bit of time since 2012. In 2012, I had a heart attack, and my daughter was 15 at the time, and I was worried about um, possibly not being here, and um, how would I prepare my daughter for the future in the event that I wasn't there. And so I put my affairs in order, and I began to write a letter to my daughter, and I tried to anticipate some of the things that she might need to know. And so uh, the letter became very long, and ultimately I decided it ought to be a book, and that became my first book, and it was called Seize Your Destiny, A Roadmap to Success. And it was essentially about what I had learned during my 30 years of professional life and um, how I could download that and pass that on to her and my nieces and nephews. The, um, so after I put my affairs in order and after I started writing that book, I realized that the future, the next 30 years, a world that I had not lived in was the world that she was going to live in. And so I thought I needed to do some reconnaissance. I needed to look ahead at the next 30 years and try to figure out what was going to happen then. And um, so when I did that, I, what I saw um, was profound. It, 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 uh, it really surprised me. And I was a pretty well-read guy, so for me to be surprised by everything as much as I was, I thought, well, everybody else would be really surprised at, at what I saw, and they need to know this, and they probably don't know this. You saw the value. Yeah, I saw the future. Yeah, the I future. saw, I saw the, the future. the value of the information that yes. you got yes. that most of us would don't even have a clue about. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so I thought I needed to share that, so that became, began a journey in collecting all that information and writing a second book. And, that's, and that book became Millennial Samurai, A Mindset for the 21st Century. Mm -hmm. And Millennial Samurai is um, essentially, if I were to drop you off in the, in the Amazon rainforest and I were going to give you a duffel bag for your survival, there are certain things I would put into that duffel bag, right? Water, a compass, a means to start a fire, maybe a knife, an ax, a saw, those types of things. Mm -hmm. So if I'm gonna drop you off on the sidewalk in the middle of the 21st century, what goes into that duffel bag? And that duffel bag became Millennial Samurai, a mindset for the 21st century. And by the way, it's an amazing book. Well, thank you. Really amazing. Thank you. So that's broken down into 182 chapters 
of issues that I think you need to be thinking about. And, but the chapters are only one to three pages each. Which so, is great. Yeah. That's what good because we don't, now these days everybody like fast, fast, fast. Exactly. We don't have time. You just go, that's <laughs> what I loved about it. Ex you go to the subject and, and just you exactly, got it. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, for example, you've got these University of Pennsylvania professors that did an 800 page treatise on the subject of character, right? So you can write thousands of pages on the subject of character. But nobody wants to read thousands of pages on the subject of character. So what, what information can I impart to a young person like my daughter or my nephews and nieces in three pages mm -hmm. that teaches them about character and how fundamental it is to their life and, and get them to understand that and embrace that concept in only three pages, right? So I did this 182 times on different subjects. So it's, it's almost like writing haiku poetry. So you're approaching uh, education uh, through the book in different way that other people done yes. before. Yes. So it's unique. <coughs> yes. So somebody else might do a book that's you know, 200 pages on positive thinking. Mm -hmm. I'll do one to three pages on that but I'll, I'll make you understand why positive thinking is important. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'll teach you things about it that, um, that you would learn in that 200 page book without having to read that 200 page book. And you'll get the, uh, it'll distill the core elements and the most important things and lessons that you need to take away. So the book is great for young people and, and for, for all people of all ages. But essentially, let me tell you about some of the things I saw. Okay. So when I started looking at the future, I saw that uh, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking said that the singularity, that moment in time when machine intelligence will eclipse human intelligence, would be the greatest event in human history, greater than fire, greater than the wheel, greater than anything that has ever been conceived by humankind. Um, and, and so think about that event, how profoundly that event could change society and, and all aspects of society. And then I read that um, Ray Kurzweil, the head of artificial intelligence for Google, uh, the guy who Bill Gates says knows more about artificial intelligence than anyone he knows. Um, Ray Kurzweil has been predicting changes in technology since the 1990s. And he's been, a, he's been correct in his predictions about 80% of the time. When I first started reading Kurzweil, he was saying that the singularity would come as early as 2045. Mm -hmm. He's now revised his prediction and says that the singularity could come as early as 2029, which is oh, eight, very years, soon. <laughs> eight years away, right yeah. around the corner. Yeah. Elon Musk has commented that it could be sooner, okay? Sooner now, than eight sooner years. Than two th two th sooner than eight years. Now, in 2017, Vladimir Putin said that he who controls artificial intelligence will control the world, will be able to subjugate any other country and any other military. And so this is a profound moment in history that is racing towards us, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, and racing fast. And racing fast. Mm -hmm. um, so the level of change that we are starting to experience and starting to see now mm -hmm. on the news, I analogize to the water on the floor from an impending tsunami. So I see a tsunami coming. And, and I think that the changes that we're starting to see right now are just the very early stages of that technological revolution. An example of that is your cell phone. Your cell phone is technology. Yeah. right that was recently introduced in the last several decades years, and, yeah. and uh, social media even more recent right these are new technological phenomena. this phone has a hundred thousand times the computing power that NASA had in 1969 when they put men on the moon and everyone has one that is part of the technological revolution this is the first accessible wave accessible to people to everyone yeah. yeah everyone my daughter has these everybody yeah. has these so we have vast amounts of technological power in in our hands um, the Arab Spring um, was uh, you know came about in part because of Twitter and the ability of people to commu communicate with each other and mm -hmm. and rise up against their governments right so this power that we now have and and the impact that it's having on us is profound. Suicide rates have increased, especially among young women. And what, why do you think is that? 
Well, because um, because we're 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 seeing people posting things about their lives that are um, not real. that may not be real in many cases, or that are exaggerated in many cases. We see the Kardashians, as you know, you mentioned your name, the difference <laughs> between your name and theirs. But we see people like that on social media, and. Um, people want to emulate that. People think, well, I can do that. Well, I can, you know, Or be why that. is not happening to me? Right. Somebody's getting married. Why is not happening to me? So yeah. they're or getting depressed. Exactly. Why are all my girlfriends getting married and I'm not? Mm -hmm. Right? Could be a cause of distress. Yeah. Right? Why are these girls picking on me on social media? Could be a cause of distress. Or how come this person is successful and I'm not, I'm working so hard, I'm not getting successful. Right. So right. they're seeing just the end, war, the, the end. They're seeing what, what people want them to see. To see. Yeah. 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 So this is just one aspect mm -hmm. of, of our changing society and how technology is influencing these radical changes in society. And what I'm essentially saying um, is that, that, you haven't seen anything yet. That, that the level of change, the speed of change, the magnitude of change is, I believe, going to be much more significant than what we're seeing today. And that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Now, this can be good and this can be bad, right? So we control that today. Today, we have the ability to influence the direction of how social media, for example, is used, mm -hmm. right? People have much more power than they realize. But the reason they don't realize their power is because the power doesn't come from them individually. The power comes from them acting collectively, mm -hmm. right? So if all, imagine if all the people of, uh, well, just imagine if, let's say, you know, five million people got together and marched on Washington peacefully completely peacefully and said, this is the change we want to see. We want money out of politics. We want corruption and special interest influence out of politics. We want certain changes. If, if 5 million of 335 million of us were to simply make that effort, they could create massive change. But we don't do that because we don't realize that, that we have that power. We think that somehow you know, uh, things are beyond our control. And they're really not beyond our control. I could give you another example, a, a really easy example. They've, uh, in locally, here in Las Vegas, um, we've seen over the last couple of years how they've started charging parking fees, right? Mm -hmm. When I grew yeah. up in Las Vegas, you drove up to the valet. And drinks were free, everything yeah. was free. <laughs> yeah, you drove up to the valet, you gave him your, car, your yeah. keys, he took your car, you came back, you gave him a couple bucks or five bucks or whatever, and you were done, and it was great, and it was fantastic. And even when we were still doing that in Las Vegas, they were charging exorbitant fees for parking in LA 10 years ago, 15 years ago. They were doing it in New York, but Vegas wasn't. Vegas was different. Now, then we changed because the economy softened and the hotels needed to monetize anywhere that they could. And so they decided, you know, we're, we're leaving 50 million, 100 million a year on the, on the table because we're not charging for parking. Let's emulate LA, let's emulate uh, New York, let's start charging parking, right? Well, we as locals, right, I don't think that's a good thing. I think it's a very bad thing. I think it's a regressive tax. Mm -hmm. I think that the poor man who wants to take his daughter to lunch at one of these hotels might not take his daughter to lunch for her birthday because it's going to cost him $25 to park. Extra, yeah. I think that stinks. So frankly, uh, I, I'm against charging for parking at hotels and, and I want to go back to the old system. Now, I can't make that happen by myself, but if I got a petition together and I had 100,000 or 200,000 threatened to raise the gaming taxes on local casinos that charged locals for parking, it would happen like that. They would change yep. immediately. That's where your power lies. So you have power when you move in a group. Mm -hmm. You are much less powerful when you act as an individual or, or think and behave as an individual. In any case, Change is coming, and we need to raise our game, right? Um, leaders don't run from problems. They run at them, right? So I'm not fearful of any of this. I want to engage in this. I want to meet the future head on. I want to create a future that is an empowering future 
like what you're all about, right? Which is why I'm on your show and which is why <laughs> I love you. what you're doing. Because, you. because I love the fact that you're trying to empower other people. And I really believe that that is the answer to humanity moving forward. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's people like you that are helping other people elevate their lives and move their lives forward. That's the answer, right? We need more Amy Kardashians, oh, right? We need, a lot, we need a lot more, thank right? Thank you. Um, if I could clone you, I, I would clone the <laughs> hell out of you, okay? So, 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 so this, is, you know, this is essentially my message, is that we need to understand that, that humanity is profoundly interdependent, mm -hmm. okay? Um, we don't, you know, some of us believe I'm not my brother's keeper, right? Well, you really are, you know, and, and, and you are because and Milton Friedman, the Nobel Prize winning conservative economist at the University of Chicago, won his Nobel Prize for a simple observation. People operate out of self-interest. If you want somebody to do something, tell them why it is in their self-interest to do it. It is in your self-interest to help other people. Mm -hmm. Because if you help other people and you rise everybody up, um, we will have a much more um, egalitarian, a much more successful, thriving, productive society. Um, instead, if you take the attitude, I'm not my brother's keeper, then you will leave large segments of society behind. And those large segments of society and behind will not starve gracefully, right? And quietly, mm -hmm. right? And will not behave like they do in some other third world countries. Because here, they have expectations. They have a sense of entitlement. They have a sense of what's possible. Yeah. And so when they're deprived of that, they're not going to go quietly. And so we don't have that option, nor should we. We should be engaging and lifting up all segments of society in the United States and around the world to try to um, move together, yeah. move forward together. Affects us directly and indirectly. Yes. You know. So, so you know, I, I look at the, um, for examples of, you know, how to prove this thesis that I believe that, we, that humanity is profoundly interdependent mm -hmm. and that we must help each other. Um, and there's evidence of this in the animal kingdom, right? Schools of fish move in schools. Um, flocks of sterlings move in flocks. Packs of wolves move in packs. There are reasons for this, right? When a flock of sterlings is moving in unison and an eagle is trying to swoop down and hunt, um, you greatly increase your odds of not being the prey and not being eaten if mm -hmm. you're in a group of thousands. That's right. If you're one lone sterling, you know, on your path from point A to point B, you're gonna get picked off by that eagle. But if you're part of a larger group, your odds are that it's you may just, make the journey safely, yeah. right? Schools of fish, same concept, mm -hmm. right? Uh, colonies of ants, colonies of bees, look how they work together to build, right? Uh, the fire ant uh, can't swim. It dies, in, it drowns in torrential rains. So during torrential rains, the fi fire ant will lock their legs and self-assemble into floating rafts. Together, they survive. Wow. Alone, they would perish. Mm. So what do all of these examples teach us, right? What can we learn from just looking at nature? And what we can learn is that we are all profoundly interdependent one another, with one another, that we, that we obtain great power and great resource by working together, and that alone um, our survival is, is much more threatened. And so when I see the division that is occurring in the United States and around the world today, it, 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 it concerns me, right? And so um, I'm speaking out against it, and I'm trying to speak towards this profound interdependence and this idea of, of cooperation and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Another illustration of the power of collaboration is um, in the academic field, right? So in the 1920s, the average scientific paper was written by one author. In the 1950s, there were eight authors to the average scientific paper. Today, there are 36 authors on the average scientific paper. A recent paper came out with 5,000 authors. <laughs> It takes 6,000 people of different trade skills to create a single Boeing aircraft engine. Now the Wright brothers created that engine maybe with you know, the help of uh, half a dozen or a dozen fabricators that they worked with and they created a small airplane engine. 
but that's not what Boeing is doing today. Boeing is leveraging the resources of 6,000 people to create their engines, right? The great work of today and tomorrow is not being done by individuals. It's being done by teams, right? So we need to start thinking in those terms. So they're using technology for the good, good to, to collect all this information, you know, <coughs> yes. put all this people together. It can be used for good yeah, or it can be used good for, bad. for bad. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's all sorts of technological advances. There are all sorts of tools. Um, you know, there, it, it's like we've been, we, we are sitting on all the tools that are necessary to create a second enlightenment in yeah. the world, right? So we had the dark ages and we had the first enlightenment and people gathered in, in literary salons and cafes and they shared knowledge and the knowledge went from the monarchies and the churches to the general public and this was the first enlightenment period, yeah. right? Well, we now have the ability, we have the technology to create a second enlightenment, right? We have the internet, we have blockchain technology, we have social media. We can spread knowledge and information and inspiration and help, you know, we can educate the world with the technology that we have, well, right? You talked about technology, how we can think about something. Tell us <coughs> a little bit about that. How can, like, w yeah, something's yeah. gonna okay, be. Okay, so, so, so today, so when I was a kid, I used to have to get on my bike and go to the library to, you know, get some research. Today, um, I just go, my daughter and I just, we go on, a f on the phone, right? And we Google whatever we want to know. In 20 to 30 years, according to Kurzweil, you won't have to go on your phone and Google anything. Your neural cortex will be connected to the cloud wirelessly. <laughs> and you'll just think of a question and the answer will come to you, okay? Well, uh, uh, some of the uh, people like Kurzweil are talking about a hive mentality mm -hmm. where you will know everything that I know and I will know everything that you know. Um, we, you know others are talking about we'll have the ability to read each other's thoughts and know what each other that is, is thinking. That is scary, right? Very there. scary, very scary. You yeah, know, because so part going, of... Because so you better part, fix your thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we be, well, let's, hope, be that, let's hope that we learn to control our thoughts simultaneously <laughs> because, you know, part of what we're seeing right now is, is um, people on social media mm -hmm. are talking about what their thoughts are yeah. and they are revealing themselves yeah. and, and others don't like what they're seeing, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And so it's creating this tension, mm -hmm. right? And so we have all these issues that we need to deal with. And uh, Sheryl Sandberg, who, was the, who is the COO at, at Facebook, uh, the only female director on their board of directors. And uh, she's had a distinguished career. She was uh, chief of staff to Larry Summers um, when he was president of Harvard. And um, she's a brilliant woman. And she says that um, you cannot change that which you are unaware of. But once you are aware, you cannot help but change. And so part of what needs to happen is we need to increase awareness. We need to create awareness, mm -hmm. right? If there's a tsunami coming and, and shift, nobody's shift, talking. Uh, shift our thoughts. Shift our thoughts. To stay positive yes. because some day, someday somebody's going to read it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically because we know we're spiritual being yeah. but in a human body. So we need to be careful what we're ordering ourselves to think about. Yes, yes. So, so the way, and this is another thing, you know, when, when you're born, nobody gives you a, a training manual or a, 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 a manual on how the human brain works, mm -hmm. right? But if you understood how the human brain works, then, you could work then, then you'd, you'd, uh, you'd understand why you need to think the way that I'm talking about mm -hmm. and, 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 um, take certain actions. So let me tell you a little bit about how the brain works, okay? So first of all, our brains receive uh, 11 million bits of information per second, okay? So every moment of the day, throughout your life, your brain has been receiving roughly 11 million bits of information per second, okay? Wow. Now, your conscious brain, so that's all coming in, mm -hmm. okay? Um, your conscious brain can only process 15 to 50 bits of information per second, which means that the vast majority of information is entering your brain outside of your conscious awareness. Okay, so it's coming in, it's affecting how you think, it's affecting how you see the world, but you're not even conscious of the fact that part of your perception, part of your uh, worldview 
is created by information that you didn't pick and choose and select and, and gatekeep and monitor. It sneaks in. It, it snuck in, right? Like when you watch commercials yeah. without even knowing that you 100%. see the commercials and then you're hungry very soon, <coughs> you want to go shopping. Exactly. And you don't even notice that. Or on your, on your social yeah. media feed, yeah. you're being sent information that is very targeted. You searched for this item, now you're being sent that item over and over again, mm -hmm. right? So there, uh, the, the one thing to, to gather from this is that, number one, we are being surveilled on an ongoing basis, um, massive data collection. Um, so, you know, Google knows where, that I'm sitting here talking to you based on our two phones being next to one another, mm -hmm. okay? They don't even need to know whose phone it is. They know that they can figure out that this is my phone based on a, my pattern of movement throughout the city this, today. And they can say, well, he showed up at this address, that's his home, th that's a home. He showed up at this address, he's there with Amy. Mm -hmm. You know, they can figure out who I am based on my movement. So there's that to think about. There is, we've learned more about the human brain in the last five years than the last 5,000 years. The ability to hack the brain, okay. the ability to motivate us and move us, uh, the malleability of the human brain, the, the susceptibility to all this information that we are consciously unaware of. These are all issues to think about. Our thoughts, what are our thoughts? Our thoughts are, are transitory packets of sensory data mm -hmm. that may or may not be true, right? So you have a thought. What is that thought? You think that thought is true. Mm -hmm. You think this person is a good person. Yeah, you think that's this what person, you believe. Yeah, you believe you this believe person. It. Yeah. yeah, but it's all based on transitory packets mm -hmm. of sensory data mm -hmm. that you've either collected over time or that you're collecting at the moment as you're interacting with the person. And so you're forming these thoughts. What you need to understand is that the thoughts are not necessarily truth. There's a difference between what you think and what is true. There's, there's a famous uh, saying from uh, the Talmud that, that I'm, I'm not a religious person per se, but um, the Talmud says, we see the world not as it is, but as we are, right? Mm -hmm. And that's very profound yeah. because it's true. That's powerful. You know, we, we see the world not as it is, but as we are. Yeah. It's us and our brain based on our How history, we're viewing it. interpreting that information and coming away with a conclusion. Right, so you may see uh, police, and you may think they're, you know, racist or they're, um, you know, uh, denying people rights or whatever. And on occasion, this is truth, mm -hmm. but in other instances, it's not truth. Right? It's viewed or, differently. Or it may not be true. It may be true about this officer, but it may not be true to about to these of them. officers. Yes. Right? Yes. So we form these views, and we form these beliefs, and we need to. By, by understanding how the brain works and the limitations on truth that are delivered to you through your senses, I can, you can question things. I can, you know, I can relate to that. I never felt any prejudice before 9-11. Yeah. Because I'm from the Middle East, then very soon, it took me several years before people start to understand Lebanese people are different. Than yes. This. Just because you're called Middle <coughs> Eastern, yes. then I felt the, I don't want to even say I'm Middle Eastern. Yes. Because I was afraid yes. they're going to think, oh, you guys are this and yes. that. Or there is no Christians in the Middle East. Yes. They're all Muslim or whatever. There is good Muslim. There is good Christians everywhere yes. in the world. Yes. So people would judge the police. Yes. Just because one policeman did the wrong thing or yes. whatever. Yes. So Same is true with Muslims. Same is true with, with Middle Eastern every, yeah, people. Middle Eastern, yeah. Yeah. So an event like 9-11 triggers certain beliefs, okay. causes people to think a certain way, causes them to be reactive and, and, and not particularly thoughtful. No, yeah. You know, they're impacted by... The you know, one, one incident that happened. Exactly, or, and, yeah. or a series of incidents that they see on TV, yeah. right? Yeah. So they come to believe that all Muslims, you know, behave, behave as ISIS behaves, right? Or yeah. think as ISIS, and ISIS that's not the And reality. that's not the case, that's not the reality. Yeah. So it's not truth. It's yeah. not truth. And what we need to be is we need to be seekers of the truth. And we need to understand to question our beliefs, yeah. right? And, and to question the beliefs of others, right? And to understand that information is not, uh, you know, 
uh, that we may believe to be true or that we may believe to be false is not necessarily true and not necessarily false. So um, Frank Zappa, uh, musician, there's been some research on musicians that say that some of the greatest minds in the world may have been people like Mozart, right? Because it uses so many parts of the brain. So Frank Zappa once said that uh, um, a mind is like a parachute. It doesn't work if it isn't open. So I want people to think about um, the future. The future is going to change at a very radical pace. It's almost like dropping out of an airplane and you're plummeting towards the ground. Now you have a parachute, but that parachute doesn't work if it isn't open. Mm -hmm. And that parachute is your mind. And so your mind must remain open and it must remain open to incoming information. And you don't want to search for information that is confirming of your beliefs. You want to search for information that is disconfirming information, that is disconfirming of your beliefs. Science makes progress through disconfirming information. Mm -hmm. If you believe a certain way and it's true, then you're in good shape. You're on the right path. The information that you need is information that tells you that what you think is not true. That's disconfirming information. Mm -hmm. So instead of searching for validation, yeah, this is the way I think and this guy thinks like me and therefore I'm right, yeah. which is very comforting and reassuring. And they're feeding your belief. Yes. Some people are their leaders oh, yeah, yeah. are feeding your belief. Oh, they yeah. know what you believe and they're like, you're staying right here yeah, so yeah. I could sell you more. I exactly. could make more yeah, money yeah. Yeah. instead of looking like what's real yeah, and yeah. what's not real. Yeah, yeah. CNN, CNN and Fox appeal to the confirmation biases of their viewers, mm -hmm. right? So on CNN, you're going to see things that tell you that you're right. And the those way, people are attractive to that particular yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They know who their audience is. Yeah. They know who follows them. They know what they believe. And they're basically feeding them what they believe. And the same and thing with... Getting them to nod yeah. their heads and say, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I feel good. I want right, to hear more. Right? I want to hear yeah, more. Exactly. You're feeding me. <laughs> and you feel very comfortable. Yeah. Fox is doing the same thing to a different audience, mm -hmm. right? A very different audience. And so if They're you... They're speaking their language, yes, basically. Yes. So what channel are you watching? Are you, mm -hmm. are you watching the channel that makes you feel comfortable, that thinks like you do? and that tells you what you want to hear? Here. Or are you watching the channel that's likely to give you disconfirming information mm -hmm. that is going to upset your beliefs and cause you to think a different way, cause you to see a different side, yeah. right? So I'm- Or are you watching both and make your own decision. I'm watching all of them. Me too. I'm watching all of them. And <laughs> I that's what I think and that's what I think everyone needs to do. Yeah. Right? Watching, we need to watching we need all to and see what's right, what fits right, what doesn't fit right. Yes. Before we leave, yes. I wanna ask you this question. Yeah. Now if we're gonna one day not use even cellular phone and we're gonna ask Google from here, um, I need the nearest restaurant or right. something. Right. Are we going to be hacked on that? They yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh. Going to hack our brain? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, you think that's funny? <laughs> okay, so so Elon Musk right now okay. is working on a company called Neuralink. Okay. And they're talking about implanting these, these super, super small fibers, smaller yeah. than a human hair, into your brain, okay? And then you'll be able to connect to the cloud from that information. You'll be able to control your mood mm -hmm. with your phone. So if you're depressed, you'll be able to change your mood. If you wow. want to increase your memory, you'll so be you able to talk to your brain. So something will talk to your phone. brain. And then if somebody your hacks your phone, right, they can they hack, you. hack you. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How dangerous. And some people now, they think if we were taking the, uh, the shots, there is some, vi some yeah, vaccine controlling us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is that true? No, what do I you think, think, I, of think that? I think that's complete horseshit. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I think okay. I, I think I think that 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 vaccines have saved probably 50 million people. Uh -huh. Right. They are probably the greatest medical discovery in the history of medicine. Yeah. Right. Because they've saved more lives. And, you know, I think that there is a a, a potential future mm -hmm. that could be a dystopian future if we don't get a hold of things. So I think we're at a tipping point between enlightenment mm -hmm. and dystopia. And we're either gonna move towards enlightenment or we're gonna move towards a, a bad place. Yeah. And, and so um, we control that. I believe that today we control that. 
in, in a lot of science fiction, you see these dystopian environments, right? Uh, Hunger Games or something. And, and, you know, how did they get there? They got there because people sat on their hands, mm -hmm. they felt powerless, they did nothing, they allowed technology to take its course in whatever direction it went, they tried to exert no influence over that direction, yeah. they didn't voice their opinions, uh, they were too busy dealing with the everyday challenges that we all deal with, right? Paying the rent, getting the kids off to school, taking care of our elderly parents. They're dealing with all, all of these things. Who's got time to think about the future and yeah. to think about where technology is going and how I can influence it? And I don't feel powerful and I don't feel I can influence it. Well, you know, these are kind of self-fulfilling belief systems, right? Yeah. If you believe that, then that will become your reality. If you believe that you are powerful and that you can affect change and that you can be a part of a movement that creates change, then that will be your reality. And I believe that as human beings we have immense power, but it all comes from us acting in unity. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know how much time we have and I can go on forever. Uh, you're going to come back. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> We're going to have you okay. back because, okay. I mean, you have some amazing information. Now, I want to... Uh, tell you about one of the clients that I uh, coach. Uh, she said, well, I'm not going to take the shots. She wanted me to convince her. And I'm like, I'm not convincing anybody. Yeah. That's not my job. Yeah. Okay. She's listening to whatever she's listening. And I just gave her a small example and she went and got the shot without me convince her with anything. She said, well, our government, she's overseas. Our government, are, you know, they take over our lives and yeah. that's why we're, they want us to get a shot. They don't allow us to go out without having a shot. I said to her, if your government want to kill you, yeah. no, they tell you don't take the shot, go yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people would die. Yeah, yeah. And then she said, oh, I never thought of it that way. And she went and got the shot yeah. without me uh, yeah. convincing her. Yeah. But if that's what they want to do, and why would they would just get you out, say, go out and yeah. get killed. And why would the government kill all the people that are believers in science and medicine, yeah. the intelligent thinking you know, people, why would they want to knock wanna, all them off, Yeah, right? why they want to do that yeah, to you? It's ridiculous. And not only that, I said, your country, uh, the, the reputation of your country yeah. will go down because so many people are dying. Nobody's going to buy product yeah. it, from it, overseas from you or want to deal with you. It, it, so the yeah. government want to save you. Yeah, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It is true that, that all medications mm -hmm. contain Have some risks, risk. right? Yeah. So, you know, you hear this every time a, a, a pharmaceutical is advertised, yeah. can cause liver failure, can yeah. cause blindness, can, you know, do all these horrible things, right? Yeah. So, you know, taking your high blood pressure medication could do that. Yeah. Taking your, you know, heart medication can do that, and this right? this is out of millions of people exactly. just maybe here and there they get affected well, by it. This it doesn't is, mean that it's going to kill everybody. Yes, that, that's the point. We have yeah. given millions and millions and millions of these shots, yeah. including the current vaccine shots and for I'm COVID. And I'm hoping right? millions of millions of people hear your voice. Yeah, globally hundreds of millions <laughs> of people. Because that's important. Right, have Very been important. inoculated, right? Yeah. The number of people that have had adverse reactions yeah. is probably less than 10,000 out of maybe 200 million, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, there are instances like where you, anything else, you, you could any have medication. a negative reaction. The yeah. way I look at that is that, okay, what are my odds of having an adverse reaction I place those at, you know, at way below 1%. Mm -hmm. And what are my odds of catching COVID and having to be hospitalized and possibly having permanent damage or death? And I place those at higher if I'm unvaccinated, yeah. right? M much higher than the risk of the vaccination. So yes, they both present risks. Mm -hmm. And yes, you could have an adverse reaction. Well, if you don't have the shot and you get sick, you might die from that. Absolutely. How More, many people have? Uh, yeah, right? exactly. So, so I choose the lesser of two risks. Yeah, right? that's your choice you make. Yes, and I don't believe that in 2021, yeah. my government is trying to harm me. Okay, yeah. I don't believe that. Now, maybe in 2030, ask me in 2030 or ask me in 2040, I may have a different belief system. Yeah. I may say, no, you know what? These guys have been behaving so badly over the last pack de decades. I'm not taking anything that they give me, right? But I'm not there yet. Well, I'm uh, going to keep having you on the show until that time. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately, some people are already there. Some people, 
you know, see how the news lies to them, right? Let's say they're a conservative and they turn on MSNBC and they're watching MSNBC and they're disagreeing with everything that they're saying. Or let's say they're a liberal and they turn on Fox and they're listening to Fox and they're disagreeing with everything that Fox is saying. Those people are losing trust. They're losing trust in, in our major institutions, our media, our government, our police, our hospitals, our health care, the CDC, Tony Fauci. They're losing confidence in these people because of misinformation that has been provided. There, right? Some people are believing that he's horrible, uh, yeah. Fauci. There's horrible information that's been delivered. That, yeah, I and mean, they get fat that and they believe it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we're getting yeah. mixed signals. We have one president yeah. that's telling us, hey, don't worry about it. It's not an issue. Take the shot if you want it. Don't take the shot. You know, and then you got another president saying, I'm going to mandate these shots for every, you know, citizen. Right. Yeah. So these are very, very different, different mixed messaging. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. yeah. These these politicians uh, need to get on the same page. Yes. And, and they need to start understanding that we need them to work together for to solve us. for us. For right? us. We're Not we're for the special you, interests them. Yeah, yeah. that they're surrounded by. Yes. But for us. Right. They owe a fiduciary That's duty to I us. That's why I love to have you on the show, because you're very fair. You don't get on this side or this side. You go with what you know yeah. and you study. You go deep. Yeah. And that's well, what you. you do. As a, I, I mean, you've been, you've done a lot of things. You fought you all the way to the Supreme Court, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you won. Think of it this right? way. There are 335 million of us in America. Seven and a half billion of us on the planet, right? The idea that one group with one philosophical, ideological belief system is going to lead a divided country mm -hmm. all in one direction is an absurdity. Okay. You're not going to get Democrats leading all of these Republicans and you're not going to get Republicans leading all of these Democrats. You need leadership <laughs> that understands that they represent all 335 million of us. We need to have you back. Yeah. Please. We okay. Really, because this subject is so amazing and people need to hear the person who have common sense yeah. who's not trying to sell them something yeah. you're, you're not trying to sell them anything no. you don't need the money from anybody no. so I'm not you're running really, for anything you're not running for anything you're Never just will. serving humanity yeah. and i think exactly why i love to have you all the time uh, here because you're you're giving us something very powerful and real well, thank you. Very, very real. Thank you. And I appreciate that. So thank you so much thank you. for being with us today. I hope all of you um, gained lots of insights and get empowered to, to make your own res research everything. Don't believe one side or the other. And it's, of course, it's up to you. But to focus on what's real and your common sense and your intuition will tell you when you back away a little bit and watch multiple uh, channels that gives you information and make your own decision because you are your own leader. Stand up for yourself. And the more we have more individual leaders, we become more powerful because one person can influence a lot of people around them. Like, George, you're influencing so many people around you who's hearing your message right now. I hope. Yeah, to step back and make it their own decision. Yeah. So, again, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Here. And um, until next segment, until next time, I hope you stay safe and take care of yourself. If you would like to be part of the studio audience or would like to be involved, please visit empoweringhumanitytv.com. Sponsored by The Negotiator Mind. Shifts your perspective on life. Red Valley Media Group. EasyWay.tv. And the Women's Federation for World Peace at WFWP.us.